Hi, my name is David Heredia, and this is my reading reflection vlog on Linda Hogan's Power. Now, Linda Hogan's Power, uh, I want to talk about the author Linda Hogan for a little bit. Linda Hogan is a Chickasaw poet who uh, is a descendant of the Chickasaw Native American tribe in Oklahoma and uses her experience, you know, growing up with Native American roots um, to write Power, a story about a young girl named Amishtu who suffers like through two conflicts throughout the entire book. One conflict is her not fitting in kind of the taiga traditional uh, world and the uh, Western American kind of world. And you also have another conflict of Ama, who is a family friend, also a descendant of the taiga tribe in Florida, uh, killing a panther after a storm. Uh, the panther is a sacred animal for the taiga people and is also an endangered animal federally protected. And you see Ama's judgment between this Western world and the taiga world. You also have the contrast of the natural world and the kind of human world. And I think the way Linda Hogan does this throughout the book is very genius. You have the main plot of the book going on. And while that's happening, you also have kind of these uh, little sprinkles of writing, excellent writing that describe kind of the frogs jumping and croaking and the crickets chirping and the birds calling and the wind flowing. And you also have, you have these sprinkled in between the plot of the book, which very much makes a contrast between the natural world and the human world. Uh, Linda Hogan, again, uses this contrast to kind of fortify the other contrast where the Taiga people are more spiritual and kind of are more responsible with the earth. And the Western kind of world kind of pollutes the lakes, makes oil rigs, tears down these woods to make oil rigs, relocates people. And these two contrasts work very hand in hand, but, you know, Linda Hogan does make it a point to separate the natural world and the human world and how we need to kind of bond and be more in touch with like nature. It's what human, it's what Linda Hogan is trying to say throughout the book. You have contrasts at the book, but you also have comparisons. And Linda Hogan also does this in a very subtle way. You have the storm um, throughout the book. The storm is kind of the catalyst for most of the events in this book. And Linda Hogan uses the storm as a metaphor for rebirth. And Mishtu kind of has to think about her life after the storm because the storm does destroy not only the environment, but also Mishtu's kind of view of the world. And in both Christianity and the Taiga belief, a storm is kind of seen as a rebirth. And Linda Hogan is very much aware of this kind of similar belief. You also see it in Popol Vuh, where the storm kind of represents rebirth. And you have the metaphor of the storm making a comparison between the two worlds, the Taiga world and the American world, kind of bringing it together again, um, just making this beautiful compar er, comparison. Another contrast, or another comparison that happens throughout the book, it happens more towards the end of the book, where Amishtu kind of reflects on the wind. You know, the wind is a life that the Taiga people believe is life. And you, you know, where you breathe in and the wind comes into you, and you, when you die, well, the wind leaves you. Uh, and Amishtu kind of makes this realization that, you know, when Christian people pray, they pray to the sky, to the wind. And it's this kind of comparison, like maybe it's the same God, Taiga people and Christian people, you know, believe in just under different names. And Linda Hogan just uses these comparisons and contrasts in a beautiful way to kind of ana anal analyze, my bad, the two, the Taiga people, the Taiga world and the American world and kind of realizes its similarities but also differences. Uh, I think this book is very, you know, smart for making these comparisons and contrasts in such a beautiful way that kind of highlights and brings forward in the spotlight kind of the Taiga people's beliefs and the American people's beliefs and how we kind of need to reassess that and kind of realize that we're maybe not too different. We are different but we're not too different in the end. And that's what I got from this book. That's my reading reflection of Linda Hogan's Power.